Hi, I'm Susan Cranston. I'm the host of Authentic You, a talk show that features real people in our community who've made changes in their life and sometimes even in their career to follow a more authentic path. And that path is often on a journey of new beginnings for them. And in some cases, they'll be dealing with experiences where they have a timeline in mind and they may be thinking about a certain moment or a year or a time frame when they want to make a change. And that change could be perhaps getting married or starting a family or taking a trip around the world or even changing their career. And that's pretty relevant and specific to a guest that I'd love to introduce you to today and a friend I've had for over a decade now, Hilary Camilleri. And Hilary and I have known each other for, well, since our daughters were really small in daycare and we, I've watched you grow in terms of the changes you've made in your life and in your career and this is really relevant for you in terms of the experiences you've had where you've had sort of a set time in mind in terms of when you wanted to do something. Can you tell us a little bit about, uh, about that and then we'll talk about the transition that you made. Uh, when I had my first job out of university I was hired at about 25, 26 years old and when I began that role I said to myself within a few months of starting it that I would do that particular job till I was 35 years old. Why I had that number in my head, I don't know, but I just said, at 35, you're going to do something different. And so I, true to my word, about two weeks after I turned 35, I left the job. So I'd been there almost nine years. And four weeks later, opened a family photography business. And that's taken off like wildfire for you. Now, in some cases, that can be really realistic. And, and for you, having that time frame of saying at 35, this is going to happen, that's not always something that will necessarily pan out for, for uh, an individual. And they may, ha may have to readjust their expectations. But let's talk about what that journey was like for you. So you made that decision, but then there was also that leap of faith that you had to take, where you had to probably push yourself outside of your comfort zone to say I'm going to do this. So what was that experience like for you when you thought about that those four weeks and now you were starting something completely new? I think in that four weeks I had time to just be at home without any other work commitments and it kind of made me realize I definitely needed to do some form of work outside of the home and, um, and so I think for me though challenges and new things never seem to really scare me that much and so starting a new business for me was just something that I didn't really think too long and hard about. I just said, this is what I want to do. I took all of the strengths that I had and the love of taking photographs and my love and passion for people and I put those together and just said, I'm going to do this family photography business. And, and maybe it wasn't as scary because I didn't think too long down the road and I, I didn't really think about what all the challenges that were going to come with being my own business owner. Um, but for me, it, it ended up working out. So you felt like success was in your cards. You really didn't think about the what ifs if this didn't work out. You had a strong belief in yourself. Yeah, there's lots of things in my life that I, um, I have lots of what ifs and that kind of thing. But when it comes to my career, when it comes to dreams and goals that I have and aspirations for myself, I never tend to really think about the what if or if this is going to fail. I typically tend to go into things just thinking I'm going to succeed at this. So did you have people that were there along the way that helped you uh, become a successful photographer or just help you through some maybe some of those hurdles or bumps that you might have experienced in your journey? I've been very fortunate right from the beginning to have very strong uh, family, very strong uh, friend relationships and so those people got behind me right from the beginning. Um, I started doing my photography business within our neighborhood, so I had a few neighbors that were very keen on my work and very supportive, and so I was able to kind of test my skills out on them. I was also very fortunate to have some local mentors help me out, take courses, and then from there I just kind of ran with it. So I researched other photographers outside of the area, kind of understood what style was going to be mine, and then took courses that lent to that particular style. And then I think um, more than anything, I just used the relationships I had with people and my passion and connection to people just to, to grow that base. That's fabulous. So you use that word of mouth referral and just built on your expertise. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. We're going to be right back and Hillary's going to share some tips for someone who may be looking at a transition and wants to start a new small business.
Hi, I'm Susan Cranston, the host of Authentic You, and I'm delighted to introduce you to my guest, Hilary Camilleri, who's joined us. And we're talking about career changes and timelines, and so when you have thoughts in your head around when you might want to make a shift. Hillary started up a photography business that's been just terrifically successful. And we just want to get some insights, Hillary, from you around what are the two or three things that you would say have really helped you along the way or tips that you would have for someone who really wants to start up a new business of their own, a new small business of their own? I think the first thing I would say to people is to believe in yourself. I think that's probably been the, the, the biggest thing that has helped me along the way. Um, I did a degree in film at the University of Western Ontario and you know the Oscars was a big deal every year to watch those and I was always fascinated watching people in their acceptance speeches and talking you know accepting those awards um, and they were talking about these these films that had been in development for 10 15 years before we ever even knew that they existed and so I always use that as a motivation thinking you know when you think about a dream or a goal of yours you have to start the groundwork long before you want that dream or goal to happen so I think that it's important to believe in yourself and to to listen to that voice inside of yourself that that wants to do something different and not be afraid to to make those changes so what's personally been you know something that's been fabulous as a result of starting up your own small business what have you gained from that what are the two or three things that you'd say you're so glad that you did this because I think there's a few things. So I think for our family, it's been it's been great because there's some flexibility with the kids. I feel like when I was working a more corporate job and I was, you know, um, kind of that, I guess, Monday to Friday, kind of nine to five, maybe sometimes even longer hours than that, uh, there wasn't nearly as much flexibility. This way I'm able to take my kids to school every day. I can schedule shoots after they're in school um, and be able to see them before. And same with after school, be there for them after school. So I feel as if I've had that opportunity to see them grow before my eyes versus you know work 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 and then all of a sudden look at them and say what happened you you grew up and without me even noticing so I think that's been huge for me as well um, our two girls have also had I think a strong um, example in our household to see their mom running a business interacting with clients um, doing something that she loves I think that's a really important example for both of my girls I know they're very proud of me and um, whenever I've had you know some awards or some accolades or anything like that both of them are are very proud of me so I think that's been a real benefit for for me personally and for our household as well well I think you're all your friends I, I'm saying I'm very proud of you <laughs> and what you've accomplished and it's just been amazing Thank to you. watch your journey and I know your friends are and your family is definitely so just on that note what are you most proud of I think that I did it I think sometimes when I when I went into the business like I said I don't think I thought that long and hard about what I was doing and that the potential that was there or what what would happen if I could go back four and a half years ago and say you know have this little mirror into the future say this is exactly what where you're going to be at this stage I would not have understood that or believed it so I think it was um, good that I just kind of got in there and didn't think too hard about it and just worked like I just got in there and networked myself around the community uh, photographed lots of families and volunteered a lot of time as well to different organizations in order to get my my name out there and I think that that has has really helped a lot. Uh, you've touched on two points that I want to ask you about in a bit more detail. Mm -hmm. One is around volunteering and how you are engaging in the community and the other is around social media. Mm -hmm. That's something that I'm obviously very passionate yeah. about but you are too yeah. and you engage that very well for your business. Can you talk about some of the ways that you use social media to help um, help your business grow? Well, I think, so um, I guess we'll talk about the volunteering. I, I, by nature, have always been someone that loved to volunteer my time. So right back to high school and university, I was always volunteering with different things. I think it's a great way to get into the community, to meet new people, and I think that that's had a real impact on my business to, to root myself in the community. And then from there, I obviously use social media as a tool to get my work out there even further. So when I work with different organizations I've donated my time to, they post my pictures. So I use, obviously I use Facebook. That's probably, I'd say, my main um, vehicle of social media to get my work out there. Obviously people post photos that I have done for them on their own personal profiles and they're shared around and that's how a lot of people do end up seeing my work. Um, I also use Twitter, so a lot of what happens on Facebook gets translated to Twitter as well. And I think those are kind of my two main pieces of social media that I use, as well as my blog. I was going to say, let's not forget that one, because mm -hmm. you do a fabulous job of storytelling. 
So how do, what's the reaction you get from families when you, when you blog and you feature some of the pictures about a shoot? I think um, it's, it's definitely a, a good thing. I think families, they really do enjoy seeing themselves in the blog. The only thing that is unfortunate is that um, with you know, being your own business owner and kind of being your own entity and, and you know, you having some people to help you out with things, some things kind of fall off the plate. And so blogging tends to be that one thing that I truly wish I had more time for because it does give me a chance to revisit the shoot that happened a few months ago, kind of relive those memories and mm -hmm. think about that family and think about some of the fun things that happened during the shoot. Um, so I, I'm trying to commit myself to blogging more. I probably blog 25% of what I shoot. So people do not see a vast majority of my work for the most part, only because of the fact that, you know, it, I am shooting so much and, and getting, you know, those photos to the clients that I just don't have time to do the blogging. But I, I do enjoy that part. And I think that for the most part, I think other people do enjoy that too. And I've had families tell me that it means a lot to them when they are on the blog and that makes them feel special. And oh. that obviously makes me feel really good. I absolutely agree with that. I think that's so true. And plus it leaves a bit of a legacy of your work mm -hmm. in terms of that experience and showcases what you're doing, but also honors the families yes. or the people that you've, you've had a photography session with. Mm -hmm. So Hillary, when you think about your journey in the last four years, and you say that you know you couldn't imagine things progressing the, the way they have and the success that you've had to date, when you look back on that, is there something that you wish you could do more of? I think for me, uh, giving back to my community even more. I do volunteer for quite a few organizations doing photography for them. It's probably the, the one thing I really truly uh, love to do. So I opened a not-for-profit business last year called Another Door Opens. It was probably my greatest accomplishment of last year. It was about four years in the making um, and I donate sessions to families who have lost an immediate family member. Uh, it just gives that family some hope and some promise for the future to build some new memories and obviously you know, with um, honoring the person that have, they have lost. So I think that um, I would like to continue to give back to my community, also because my community has been very good to me. Oh, I see you doing that in so many ways, whether it's, you know, helping my daughter Maddie with her journey as an ocean warrior or other people that you say, you know what, I just believe in this and I'm passionate about it. And I think that helps get the word out in terms of the fabulous work that you're doing. Can we talk a little bit about mentorship? Because you and I have chatted about that in terms of people coming to you now and looking at you as a strong female entrepreneur in our community. And how do you feel about that? Are you ready to take on that kind of role at this stage in your career? I think I find that actually that whole concept kind of interesting because I just kind of got in there and worked hard and just was doing my thing and you know a couple years in I was getting some emails about people feeling inspired by what I was doing and and that kind of thing and I think you know, four years later, I feel ready for that role because I have um, put a lot of time into my business. I've, um, you know, taken a lot of courses and done a lot of learning along the way um, in my personal life with my business and then obviously on the professional side as well. So I, you know, it's obviously a great compliment for people to say that I've inspired them in some way. And I think that um, that's one of the, the feelings that I love about where I'm at right now is just the fact that, um, you know, when you own your own business, you can be as, you can be what you want. The sky's kind of the limit, right? There's nothing um, sitting on you in terms of your role or your role description. So I think um, it's important for everyone to have someone who inspires them. And I've certainly have had some people that have inspired me along the way to, you know, do better and to, to do other things. So I, I take it as a great compliment. I take the role very seriously when I see that People say that I've inspired them and uh, I think it's really nice. That's fantastic. We're just going to take a short commercial break and when we come back I'm going to ask Hillary about her views on continuing education and particularly in her line of work. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Susan Cranston. I'm the host of Authentic You. And I'm returning to greet Hillary Camilleri again. She's our photographer with One for the Wall. And um, we've just been talking about a number of things in terms of her journey as a professional photographer now. And I was just about to ask her the question, which I will do now. Hillary, talk to us a little bit about continuing education. And is that important to you? Is it relevant for your business? What are your views on that? I think for me, uh, only because I've always put high value on education, I have my university degree and I've got a postgrad as well, that um, 
uh, I think it's it's very important for a photographer to continue to develop their skills. So to take courses, to seek out people they might you know admire or something about their work and their technique inspires them. So each year I take two courses out of my market um, to work on different skills, whether it be lighting or composition or that kind of thing. I also registered for uh, Ryerson's program in photography. Um, my goal was to start that this year. This year has been a lot busier than I anticipated it was going to be, so I think it's something I'll probably do for next year. Uh, just for me, it's important to have that a um, little bit more formal training. Um, it, again, it's just something it's just a, I place a high value on and learning. I buy lots of photography books. I'm reading probably a new photography book every two weeks. And then again, taking those extra courses, I just think it pushes your skills. It, it continues to um, get you to think in different ways and to, to develop yourself because the market and photography and photos and what people, you know, um, like, it, it's always changing. So I think it's really important to keep up with keep up with that. For sure and you certainly have a, an interest and an appetite for doing that and it's clearly your passion and you're very very talented photographer. When you think about young people now who may be thinking about photography as a career, now it is a fairly saturated uh, occupation. I think a lot of people are interested in doing it because it allows them to express themselves creatively and to be an entrepreneur. What are your views on that? What is the potential for someone who may want to come into photography? How difficult would that experience be for them? I think that you're very right. It's a it's it's a saturated market. There are a lot of photographers out there. I think just the access to to good equipment is very easy, and it doesn't take a whole lot to kind of put together a photography business. Just you know, there's free blogs. There's you know your uh, Facebook is is no charge as well to, to kind of open up shop that kind of thing. It's very easy to do now. I, I don't think it's as easy to actually run a successful business because there's just so many, so many, so much that goes into it beyond just taking that photograph. I think it's important too to really think about whether you want to do photography. You know, you can love photography, but it does not mean that you have to do a business. You can do it as a hobby. I've even, um, I do some one-on-one -on -one teaching, some mentoring, and I've had a few students that are in high school come through that really love photography and have a digital camera. And it was really neat to see how, um, you know, one of the girls actually is going through to be a nurse, but she, ho photography is something she wants to do as a hobby. And I thought that was really good that she had already looked at it and said, this is something I don't want to do professionally, but I want to, you know, take the best pictures I can and develop this hobby. So I think it's important to realize that, you know, just because you love it and you can take great photographs doesn't mean you have to automatically then start into a business that you can just have it as a hobby and a passion if it's something that you really do want as a business I think it's really important to take the time to understand business understand um, how to run everything behind the scenes because there is so much more than just meeting that family doing their photos when you go home that's really truly when a lot of the work begins so what advice would you, would you give someone whether it's a high school student or a college student or someone coming out of university to say these are the two or three things that if you want to get into photography you should do you, should, you obviously said learn about the business what are the other things that they might do to have a successful shot at becoming a, a photographer I think it's good to contact other photographers that do it full time and to understand what the industry is like, understand the, the benefits and advantages of being a photographer, understand some of maybe the pros or the cons of being a photographer. I think it's just like any career when, when you know, you're in high school and you're looking at different things that you go job shadow and that you understand what that career truly is about and if it's going to be for you. So I think that that is, um, that is really important to go in that understanding exactly what it's about. So meeting other photographers mm -hmm. or reaching out to them and saying you know I'm really interested in perhaps that you do a lot of outdoor shots or mm -hmm. you're really great at doing headshots or weddings or whatever your passion may be mm -hmm. in terms of, of the field of photography. You and I were chatting earlier about the potential now for you to do a lot more public speaking. What's that all about? What does that look like for you? I think um, I've really developed a great love for teaching over the last uh, few years. I don't do a lot of it, but I've done some. And when I do teach, I, I absolutely love it. So I think um, for me, I'm, what I'm interested in is actually looking to the, to the young kids up and coming today because there's so many of them that have a real fascination with photography. So in, last year I was invited to speak at a career day for high school students. It was an arts and culture day. And uh, I, I really enjoyed that 
close setting with high school students that were going around to different um, different careers and understanding what it was about and and that kind of fueled a little bit of my um, passion I guess for public speaking and so from there I went and spoke in another high school to a photography class and just talked to them about what it is like to be a working photographer and some of the things that go into that and uh, this year I've got two other public speaking engagements one fairly large one with um, grade seven and eight students just to to talk to them about what a being a photographer is like whether you want to do it as a full-time profession or whether you want to do it as a hobby and I just think I, I love working with the youth because you can just see um, you know you can you can feel what it was like to be in their shoes it feels like just yesterday that you know you're coming out of high school you're coming out of grade eight and and you know the world the world is kind of your oyster you can do anything with it so I, I love being at that stage in their life and, and talking to them at that stage to inspire them and it's and whether or not they want to do photography a lot of things that I talked to, to them about truly apply to your whole life just you know um, connecting with people and uh, you know running a good customer service business no matter what they go into in their life they probably can really uh, relate to it because everyone knows what a photographer is if you went in as an insurance agent that might be a big bigger leap for them mm -hmm. to be able to relate to what's interesting to me is that you're speaking to kids that are in grade seven and eight who are probably a little bit you know further away yet from making those mm -hmm. decisions I think that's fabulous and you know again it's giving you great opportunity um, to develop mentorship opportunities in a very public way mm -hmm. and then also look for other opportunities to help perhaps young and upcoming entrepreneurs who mm -hmm. want to become a successful photographer such as yourself so Hillary I just want to thank you again so much for being on Authentic You thank and sharing you. your authentic journey with us today wish you much continued success now how can people reach out and connect with you through your volunteer site as well as your photography site so I think the best way to connect with me is probably through my contact form my website which is uh, one for the wall .ca. Um, or you can find me on Facebook I'm the only one for the wall photography <laughs> on Facebook so they can connect with me through there I have a great community on there very positive people um, and so that's easy to get me on there wonderful thank you so much and I'd also like to thank you for joining us today. There are many other things you could have done with the last half an hour. We appreciate you spending that time here with us on Authentic You. Feel free to reach out and connect with us on Facebook at Authentic You, and that's Authentic with a K. We're also on Twitter at Authentic You. And if you're interested on checking us out on our, face on our website at AuthenticU.com and you're interested in being featured on our blog or on the show, please feel free to connect with us that way. I want to thank our fabulous crew here at Rogers TV Cable 20, as well as our Authentic You team. And again, remember, it's always a great day to be your authentic self. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon.